In case you missed it, I'm on the back nine of my three disc challenge at Dogwood at Lindsay Park. I never take that like Heiser route. I usually just take the straight gap with the diamond and hope that it'll flip up. Well, it always flips up, but hope that it'll flip up at the right time and not kick a tree in the middle and go left. But I think this right, this right side is the play, honestly. I mean, I have garbage for them with my flakes, don't get me wrong, but today they're just like coming out of my hand early. That's okay though. It's a good practice. Such a good line. It was so pretty. Out of my hand, I was like, this is going straight for the basket. We just made a putt. We just got a par with a long jumper. She's not a jump putter, guys. Usually mess those up. <laughs> it's not a throw in, but you know, it's outside circle jump putt, so we'll take it. Good bullet. This hole is a fun shotty. I have some really cool shots, so. Matt thrown on this hole because I have cool shots of Matt throwing on every single hole and I have no shots of me throwing on any holes ever so you're welcome Matthew um I'm glad I could be such a good videographer for you like it sucks being the videographer photographer friend because like all my friends all my people get all these awesome pictures and videos and I get I get nada and if I do not good or it's from my friends <clears throat> Nikki and um you know some of my other friends who have non-iphones they're those non-iphone people they're green texters and naturally the videos do not come over my iphone very well so um, i'm gonna need y'all to do better because uh iphone's where it's at so Time for some super crunched up pitos. I think this is my last bag of them. Might be time for a reorder. I don't think they make the sweet onion anymore though and they're my favorite. I knew it was gonna happen at some point, but I had this really good shot and I guess I didn't hit record. So anyways, I'm about to eat another snack. This is my one up nutrition muffins. This is the carrot cake one. It's got protein and collagen. 17 grams of protein for one muffin, pretty good. It's been in my gym bag for forever, so it's a little smushed. It's gonna be really crumbly, but that's okay. Dang, this is such a good shot. I totally forgot about that tree. <laughs> I've definitely hit that before. I really liked that line. I knew it was a risk, but I liked it. And I did something I've never done before, and that is kick Obi right over this fence. Dang, I really thought like it was gonna fade back. I still don't understand how this is a par three. 432 feet. I mean, I've, th uh, yeah, I guess so. I'm definitely three day. It's just like. I just hit that tree with my hand. I did my follow through, so I did a weird, did a weird like Annie shot again. 
That's okay. Man, I wish I had time to play two courses. Cause I see that cedar basket over there and I'm like, dang, that'd be fun. But I need to be able to go back and shower, offload these videos on the computer. Hopefully get this video pumped out ASAP. Have a lot of sitting around the airport this trip, so. We are putting almost at the cedar basket. <sighs> Should have bought over stable approach. Putter. So yeah, there's cedar basket. And I'm supposed to be over here and I'm over there. This is another fun hydro flip hole. It's only 231 and it is right there. And it's really nice when I have my air diamond because that thing is like so flippy. Today, we're gonna have to figure out how to turn over a free till. Okay, the free tail actually looks freaking awesome until it hit my tree. I thought the free tail had a chance of like parking at the basket, but I caught a late tree. Um, actually, I probably would have parked it. I did my free tail, which I'm actually really happy with. I didn't have much though. This was. What I was looking at, so. Well, 15. Basket is right there. We've actually been playing to the long basket for states of Heidi Woods, which is down that way somewhere. But I might prefer this one when I have my super fluffy disc. So the difference in like these understable discs versus my like 150, 148 air diamond, I can put those here and they're gonna pop up and either fly straight, depending on how big it is, or it's just gonna jump right. These are understable, but I have to actually, because they are still obviously much more stable than an air diamond 148, I have to actually like release it flat or even with Annie. And even though I'm really good at turnovers, like I'm really good at hyzer flips. I'm not really good at just straight Annie shots. So to try to actually release all these on Annie to get them to hold a little more of that right turn is, uh, is very difficult for me. <laughs> and that's also why I brought these discs because even though they are understable, I have to put in a lot more effort and really release them correctly versus my other ones where I can just put them on hyzer and they do what they do. nub on the right side of the basket and it's one of those where like it could be nice and just bounce in but it is not nice and it bounces out. <sighs> That's okay. Hole 16. It's actually in the short. I don't think I've ever played it in the short. And then over to the right is the long and this is actually the hole that Matthew aced during Piney Woods this year. It's really cool. I couldn't see it go in because I'm short and I was standing like down here and we couldn't really hear it either. We knew it was a perfect line and then we got halfway up the fairway and they're like, dude, it's in. And super awesome moment to see that. Oh my goodness. I just had a good shot and it didn't record. Oh my gosh. Why did that happen? I swear I hit record. If it was a snake, it would have hit me. Yeah, I've definitely never played in this basket. This one's super short. Usually we play down there. We're 
right. We got a bar. I ran into a spider web. All right, hole 17. For some reason, I always think of this as 18, and it's definitely not. 528 feet, there's only one pin, I guess. I was thinking there was a short, but I've never played a short, so I don't care. Usually go flippy, try to swing out to the right, or get right to this corner, really. So fun fact, I think this is probably only the second time ever that I've filmed every shot of a round. Definitely went faster than I expected, especially Dogwood. Y'all, I literally just did it again, I swear. I don't know, I think something's wrong with my phone because I swear I hit the record. There's the basket down there. There's my disc. I keep forgetting that I only have three discs. So I'll throw a second shot and I'm like, dang, I probably need that. But I want to run all the way over there and grab it. We have a trees. We need a little patent pending putter shot. I feel like I have way more confidence during tournament rounds than I do during this three disc challenge round. Which I guess is understandable because I have a whole bag to pick through. But I use all these discs a lot, so it shouldn't be that difficult. Alright, we are on the last hole of Dogwood with my greatest challenge. It's 2.18, so I definitely finished quicker than I expected. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's been fun. It's been rough, it's been really rough. This is by no means an indication of my skill level, which isn't much better some days, but most days it is. About to do this last hole, call my Uber. This is why I usually don't play courses whenever I'm working or don't have a vehicle because it was $16 Uber here. And I have 5% off right now because I'm getting Uber one or whatever it is for free. So that was the 5% off. So $60 and that's not even including tip because I haven't went back in the app and tipped yet. So it's like a $20, $20 Uber ride here. And to me, probably another $20 back to come play around. It's absolutely not worth it. Like I love disc golf, but no. And I have to drive an hour to every single course at home. And that's annoying, but it's like what? 30 something dollars for a tank of gas and that gets me I mean I could go back and forth like three or four times so this is double triple what I would spend to drive to a disc golf course in Houston I'm excited I got to come play I definitely need it because I have wildflower tour the first event this weekend playing FA1 in a field of people who are rated like a million points higher than me yeah I definitely needed the practice even though it would have been nice to have a whole bag but that is why I don't usually do this. It's just, it's expensive and it's time consuming and yeah, definitely worth it today. Thankful I did it, but I don't do this a lot because $40 round trip, are you freaking kidding me? Dude, Uber is so expensive right now. But yeah, all right, well, we're on the last hole and thank y'all for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Let me know if you've ever done a three dish challenge and, and how you liked it. I definitely prefer to have my entire bag, but you know, that's just me, so. This is the iconic hole 18 at Dogwood with the graveyard in the middle. It's really cool. I love this hole. <laughs> That's not how I would have thrown that disc at all if I was going to the other pin, but. All right, it appears there is not a short pin. Yeah, I think sometimes there's a short over there. Maybe the erosion. Why?
I was trying to download Lyft and my phone died and I had like a moment of panic because I was like, oh my God, did I bring my portable chargers? And thank God I did because I would have been screwed. Lyft was, I think, $18.99 or I could do, no, it was like 20 or I could do $18.99 and wait 25 minutes. So I was like, nah. Okay, well, my Lyft driver just canceled, so they're looking for me another one. Cool. I was supposed to be picked up by Santa. That's what it said. And I guess Santa did not want to come pick me up all the way at Lindsay Park. So, rude Santa. We survived. I just got back to the hotel. And, yeah, my Uber drivers were really nice. The second dude, he was jamming. He was way better than Santa. I'm heating up my food. Right now, I have a little over two hours until our shuttle, and I'm tired. That took it out of me. I'm gonna eat this 96% lean ground turkey and sweet potato, something that's been in the freezer that I had milled prepped a while back. Nothing exciting today. No foodie foods for me. I'm trying to save money because we have Thailand in less than two weeks. I'll be playing in a week. Holy cow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing this day that I made this, but my sweet potato to ground beef or ground turkey ratio is absolutely atrocious. There is hardly any sweet potato in here, which means it's going to be dry as hell. Thank God for um, plain Greek yogurt, which is a great substitute for sour cream. I do have a pretzel from yesterday that I didn't eat from Auntie Anne's. I got for free. So I'm definitely gonna eat that after because this meal gonna be hard to stomach. And this is why I could never do a fitness competition because if I had to eat like straight up ground turkey, ground beef like this, every single meal, I'd probably die. All right, I'm going to do something I rarely do on layovers, and I said this one wasn't going to have any food in it, but changed my mind. So I saw when we were coming into the hotel in Laredo last night that there was a sushi place called Sushi Madre, and I was looking at it, and it's like Mexican sushi, which I had Mexican sushi one other time, and it's just a little different. Like, I was reading, and they put, like, and pico on everything. A lot of different combinations than like normal. So I definitely have to check that out, obviously. I'm gonna go get some Mexican fusion sushi and I will show you how that is. I was really hoping they had some variation of crab rangoon, but they didn't. So I skipped appetizers and just got extra rolls. I wanted to have extra for dinner later that night because I love, love, love leftovers. These two rolls were more traditional. Like I usually get them crab, avocado, cream cheese, hot Cheetos, all my favorite things combined, but they were both phenomenal. This was definitely different than any other roll I've ever had. It had shrimp, ribeye, bacon, avocado, and cream cheese. It was really, really good and refreshing. And this was absolutely the star of the show. The main reason I went, this La Fresa roll, it was a dessert sushi roll. I've never had dessert sushi before, but it blew my mind. I'm not a huge dessert person, but every sushi restaurant needs this. And if you ever get a chance to try dessert sushi, do it. 